Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up to the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jeb's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jeb, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Magnolias and honeysuckle, and that is your collard greens and fatback. Well, Jed, spring wouldn't be spring unless I whomped up a good big pot of collards and side meat. You got wild onions in there? Just like back home. I hope you're going to have plenty of cornbread to crumble in the pot liquor. Oh, you betcha. That reminds me, I better go stir it up. Will you garden my pot for me? Why, sure, but it ain't likely any critter would bother boiling greens. There's one that will. And he's been sitting up in the tree for the last three hours, waiting for me to go into the house so he can swoop down. Sound like a buzzard. You're close. It's the ten-toed, black-tufted vittle snatcher. <laughs> Here's your water, Granny. Oh, thank you, darling. Just pour it in the pot. Come on down from there, Jethro. Can't hear you, Uncle Jed. I got chores for you. I didn't hear that, neither. <laughs> well, I got a trick that'll get him down. Well, good. Go to it. Jed, let's have a sociable this evening like we used to have back home in the hills when I cooked my spring collards. Good idea, Granny. I'll invite some neighbors in. Back home, we didn't have to invite them. That's the truth, especially the ones that live downwind. <laughs> Jethro. He bounced right back up. Twice. Don't look like he's hurt. Ah, he's fine. Did you know what Ellie done to me? Yeah, she tricked you out of the tree. Some trick. She throwed me 40 feet on my head. Well, you can fill in the hole later. Right now, we got to get ready for the spring eating festival. Hot dog. I'm cooking. Four bushels of greens, a peck of wild onions, and 20 pounds of fat back. We're hoping some neighbors will drop in. Neighbors? That ain't hardly enough for me. I mean, us. <laughs> Granny, you reckon I could have a little helping to hold me till supper? Well, all right, boy. Go fetch a plate. Here, just fill this. Yeah, I'm up here. <laughs> There's living proof that the moon ain't made of cheese. If it was, Jethro would be there. That'd be a heap less moon. I told you I could get Jethro out of that there tree. Anything else I can do? Maybe Ellie can commence inviting the neighbors. She can start with the Drysdales. Well, I don't hardly think they need an invite. Their house is downwind. Besides, Mr. Drysdale likely at the bank by now. Chief, are you serious? You're letting Mrs. Drysdale sell the house? A prospective buyer's coming this morning to look it over. But you live right next door to the club, but I can't picture you ever leaving. Well, I promised Margaret if she'd stick it out for seven years, I'd let her sell the house. And I am a man of my word. Well, congratulations. You've got newfound courage. You've got self-confidence and maturity. Thanks. I've also got an option to buy the house on the other side of the Clampets. But your wife will be in the same spot. Not exactly. The new house is 25 feet closer. <laughs> You'd better think twice about this. Your, your wife just might leave you. Gee, I hadn't thought of that. No, I don't want to dream the impossible dream. <laughs> yes. Oh, hello, Margaret. 
Milburn, darling, I hesitate to bother you. You've been so sweet about selling the house. What's the problem? Well, our prospective buyer is a celebrity, doubtless a man of fastidious taste. And I'm afraid when I show him around, he's going to be nauseated. Well, that's simple. He just don't talk so much. <laughs> I was referring to the fact that Granny is cooking some witch's brew out for the pool, and the stench is blowing this way. Well, maybe the wind will change before the buyer gets there. Don't worry about it. And, oh, oh Margaret, you get upset with me at times, but you wouldn't ever leave me, would you? Of course not, darling. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't ever get my hopes up like that again. <laughs> Chief, if I may ask, who is the prospective buyer? The famous entertainer, Pat Boone. Pat Boone? How marvelous! You know him? Well, not personally, of course, but I understand he's a perfectly charming man. Tremendously talented and yet modest and unassuming. In short, a fine human being as well as a great artist. Never mind that. I want to know about the important virtues. Has he got money? Where does he bank? Chief. Has it ever occurred to you, have you ever entertained the thought that there just might be something in this world more important than money? Of course. I not only entertained the thought, I mentioned it to my father. I said, Dad, there must be something in this world more important than money. That's when I grew the mustache. Why a mustache? To hide the scar. He hit me right in the mouth. <laughs> What have you got in that kettle? What does it smell like? Oh, no, there's no chicken in it. <laughs> it's malodorous, fetid, and stultifying. You ain't even close. It's collards, onions, and fat fat. <laughs> Granny, I have a favor to ask you. A very important gentleman is coming to my home. And if he smells this odor, I know what you're going to ask, honey. Just fetch him over. There ain't nothing like a mess of greens come spring. <laughs> now, how much longer will you be cooking this uh, mess? <laughs> oh, it ought to shimmer all day. Could I possibly persuade you to take it off the fire now? Can't wait, huh? All right, fetch over a plate. I'll <laughs> fetch over the smog control officials. Who? The people in charge of air pollution. Well, if they're friends of yours, I'll feed them. Only I don't hold to the way they're polluting our air. <laughs> Excuse. I'll be back with the police and the fire department. Well, now, if you're going to bring them, leave the air polluters home. <laughs> I can't feed the whole city. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Drysdale, and I know you're going to adore my lovely home. Do come right in, Mr. Boone. I'm uh, Mr. Boone's manager, Mr. Tucker. Oh, couldn't he come? Uh, this is Mr. Boone. I got him back from a fishing trip to look at your house. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Boone? Oh, how do you do? May I ask where that unusual odor is coming from? Odor? You must mean the exotic orchid fertilizer. My next door neighbor is an orchidist. Really? Uh, the first day of spring, we had this uh, unusual odor for a few hours, and from then on, it's just heavenly fragrance. Please do. Hurry, right in. Doc, you go ahead. I'm going to find out who's cooking those collards and fat back. Is that what that odor really is? Man, that odor's perfume to me. I haven't smelled anything that wonderful since I left Nashville. <laughs> colored greens, colored greens, good old colored greens. Cornbread and fat, fat, and good old colored greens. Colored greens, colored greens, good old colored greens. Cornbread and fat back, back and good, good old, old collard greens. greens. Where did you come from to know that song? Nashville, Tennessee, ma'am. 
Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't smelled anything that good since I left Tennessee. Oh, you poor boy. What you been eating? Oh, steak mainly, lobster, prime rib, shrimp. Well, I reckon when you get hungry enough, you can eat anything. <laughs> What's your name, son? Pat Boone, ma'am. My granny Moses. I reckon you've heard about me. Aren't you an orchidist? Oh, no. Jed and me, we sing hymns with the Methodists and the Baptists, <laughs> but mostly we're golden rulers. <laughs> oh, I see. I thought maybe you'd heard about my doctorate. You're a doctor? Probably the most famous betwixt Bug Tussle and Springfield. Springfield? Did you ever know Red Foley? Did I know Red Foley? He never missed the spring that he didn't come to our house for collards and fatback. Ha <laughs> ha, that's great. How long you been here in California? Seven years. When did you leave Tennessee? Oh, 15 years ago. What you been doing all that time? Singing, mainly. Oh, uh, no steady work, huh? <laughs> hey, who's this young fella? His name is Pat Boone, Jed. Smell my collards cooking and come a-running. Oh, glad to have you, son. Where are you from? Tennessee. My doggies, I've known Granny's collars to pull them in from a long way off, but this is a new record. He was in the neighborhood when he smelled them, Jed. I figured as much, Granny. <laughs> uh, ex excuse me. Uh, uh, would you like to stir? Oh, I'd love to. He's a drifter, Jed. Left home 15 years ago and ain't had a steady job since. <laughs> ain't had a decent meal neither, poor boy. Well, let's offer to take him in. Maybe we can help him get work. Good. <laughs> Son, uh, we got a fine big house here with plenty of room. We'd be pleased to have you stay with us. Oh, I sure do thank you, but I've got a place to stay. Now, don't be proud, Pat. Sleeping in freight yards can be dangerous. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not sleeping in freight yards. Well, then, uh, how about dropping around about sundown and having some uh, collars and fat back with us? Now, that I would purely love. Do you like cornbread and pot liquor? Does a possum like persimmons? <laughs> Speaking of possum, uh, Granny's gonna bake a few for tonight. With sweet taters. Oh, now you're making me homesick. Well. See you tonight. Listen, how can I thank you folks? You got a guitar? Sure. Good. Fetch it along this evening and you can sing for your supper. Oh, you plan to sing, do you? Well, that's how I've been making my living. Well, uh, as long as you enjoy it. <laughs> Money and everything. <laughs> uh, speaking of money, I reckon you could use a little. Oh, no, no thanks. I'll be all right. Oh, don't be bashful. I've been broke myself. I know what it's like. <laughs> oh, you're early, Mr. Policeman. We ain't gonna be eating till sundown. Uh, you can't build an open fire in Beverly Hills. Oh, sure you can. All you need is seasoned wood. <laughs> no, what I mean it. Wait a minute, aren't you Pat Boone? Oh, uh, well... Well, sure you are. I've got your latest record. Boy's got a record, has he? <laughs> well, sure, a bunch of them. I mean, haven't you seen his pictures? No, we don't get down to the post office much. <laughs> Please don't arrest him, Mr. Policeman. He's a good boy. He just fell on hard times. I'll vouch for that. Is this really on the level? I don't know who you are? Uh, that's right, officer, and uh, I'd like to keep it that way. Couldn't you parole him to us? We'll help him. How about if he give up singing and playing and takes an honest job? <laughs> Thanks, Granny, but I I'm just gonna go along quietly with the officer. Well, will we see you tonight? Oh, I'll be here. Nothing can stop me. Don't bust out of jail, Pat. Even Granny's collars ain't worth that. I'll smuggle your mess to the jail. There'll be a file in the fat back. <laughs> I hope they don't lock him up, Jed. I reckon it goes hard on you once you got a record. And him with his picture in the post office. Well, yeah, we look after him. Yes, he's right here. Mr. Clapper, for you, Chief. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Clapper, what can I do for you? Well, first off, we'd like to invite you and Miss Jean to come by this evening for collard greens and fat back. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. As we'd love it. What's fat back? What's fat back? 
What's fat bag? <laughs> Meat? Oh, oh yes, Mr. Clamart. I was just explaining to Miss Hathaway what fat bag was. <laughs> yes, good evening, eh? Good. We're going to have a little entertainment, too. A boy by the name of Pat Boone? Pat Boone? I know you never heard of him. He's from back in our part of the country. He happened to smell Granny's collars of cooking, and he come a-running. Oh, he likes collards, does he? He's just crazy about him. We all been hitting it off real good. Well, fine. We'll be looking for you. Bye. Oh, this is beautiful. Pat Boone met the Clampers and loved them. And Granny's vittles. Really? Yes, he's a collard addict. <laughs> now he'll give me anything for my house. I'll call Margaret and tell her to raise the price to a quarter of a million. Now, why give her the pleasure? <laughs> this is the kind of thing I do so well. Plucking a pigeon. <laughs> well, Mr. Tucker, I'm sure you'll agree that this is a delightful home and well worth 200,000. Well, of course, that will be up to Mr. Boone. Uh, where is he, by the way? Uh, he went next door. Oh, no. Uh, Mr. Tucker, I'm going to give you the opportunity to be a big hero in the eyes of your client. Let's say uh, 100,000. I'm sure Mr. Boone will be pleased to hear that. Why did he go next door? To investigate that odor. Oh, dear. They would have to fertilize their orchids today. And uh, let's say 50,000. <laughs> Mr. Boone didn't think it was orchid fertilizer. He thought someone was cooking collard greens in the fat bag. 25,000, and I'll throw in all the furniture. Mrs. Drysdale. Ten. I'm here. Free, free, we're free. I've sold the house. Oh, Margaret, you should have waited for me. I could have got a... You, you got a million dollars? Look again, dear. Don't tell me you sold this place for 100,000. No, look again. Ten. Oh, no wonder you were yelling, free, free. Oh, we take a little loss. It's worth it to get away from Granny's vile concoctions. That boon would have paid a quarter of a million for this house. Not after he smells that vile hillbilly brew. He loves it. He's a hillbilly himself. You just blew $240,000. <laughs> if you wish to continue this conversation, please lower your voice. Is this... Low enough? Much better. Can you hear me? Yes. But smile. How's this? Ah. Now, what do you wish to say? I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> Come on, everybody. It's pretty near collar time. Jen, I thought you was guarding my kettle. That ten-toed riddle snatcher will gobble up everything. It's all right, Granny. He's upstairs getting changed to his agent's clothes. How come? Well, I asked him to see could he give this Pat Boone a leg up in the show business. Oh, that's nice. I sure hope the boy can sing. Now, don't you worry, Jed. All us Tennessee folks are born with the gift of music. They used to call me the songbird of the Smokies. <laughs> They're telling me he's ready. Is Mr. Boone here yet? Ellie May, you ain't bringing that vomit to the Colored Festival. Oh, Granny, he just loves your biscuits and sorghum. Ellie, honey, a bear makes a poor chaperone. Mr. Boone is liable to get the idea that we don't trust him with you. There he is. Quick, hide the bear. Granny, you don't quick hide a 500-pound bear. <laughs> Miss Jane. Am I in time for the Colored Festival? You bet you are. Granny? Ellie? Fairchild? <laughs> First Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale. Oh, they'll be delayed. They're having a little contretemps. Well, they had not all to eat before they come. <laughs> Let them eat, Jeff. Betwixt Miss Drysdale and Jethro, there won't be enough for the moon boy. Yeah, and he's liable to be hungry. They don't feed him too good in jail. <laughs> are you by any chance referring to Pat Boone? You know him, do you? Well, not personally, but I've seen his pictures. And you know he's got a record. Well, he has many records. Yeah, that's what the policeman said when he took him away. I still say he ain't a bad boy. He just got roving feet. I wonder if he's any kin to Daniel Boone. Well, as a matter of fact, Pat Boone is a direct descendant of Daniel Boone. There you are, Granny. The boy come by it honest. Old Daniel sure had wandering ways. Is it possible you don't know that Pat Boone is famous? I reckon he is. 
with his picture in every post office and his record in every police station. <laughs> Jed, Granny? Oh, hi, Miss Jane. Jeffro. Folks is commencing to gather out by the cement pond. Come on, let's go. What about that bear? Well, Granny, if he's kin to Daniel Boone, he won't be scared of no bear. The girl's right, Granny. Come on, let's go. <laughs> now, remember, Tuck, these folks think I'm just sort of a singing hobo, and I like it that way. You mean you're gonna sing for nothing? Don't worry, you're gonna get your 10% of my collards and fat back. Some deal. Hey, speaking of deals, did you tell Drysdale we're not gonna hold him to that $10,000 price? I'll tell him when he gets here. You worry. Let him. I read the fine print on that agreement. With the interest he charges, he could still get 200,000 for that house. <laughs> oh, there you are. Thief, robber, singing bandit. I ought to call the police. It's crazy. Whatever mistakes the boy has made, he's promised to turn over a new leaf. Now, if we all pitch in and help him, maybe he can make us as a singer. Milburn, get me out of this thing immediately. How did you get out of the basement? Never mind, untie this straitjacket. That's a dandy idea, Miss Drysdale. Keeps you from making a pig out of yourself. I wonder could we get one of them for Jethro. All right, everybody, get yourself a plate and line up in front of the kiddle. Quick as we get through eating, Mr. Pat Boone is going to play and sing for us. Oh! Every time I see that greyhound bus go rolling down the line Makes me wish I'd talk much more to you when we had all that time But still it's only wishing And I know it's nothing more So I'm never going back Never going back Never going back Out of Nashville anymore Oklahoma City, yes, I know that she won't treat me cruel. Denver, Colorado never made me feel like such a fool. These are only cities, but they're cities without you. So I'm never going back. No, I'm never going back, never going back out of Nashville anymore. These are only without you so I'm never going back no I'm never going back no I'm never going back out of Nashville anymore oh no you and Nashville seen the last of me, honey. I may go on down to Chattanooga, walk up there on Lookout Mountain, take a look, but I ain't gonna see you. I may come on into Fayetteville, Shelbyville, maybe even Feagre, drop off in Madison, but I ain't crossing that Davidson County line no more. What do you think, Jethro? You gonna handle him? Oh, he needs too much work, Uncle Jed. Yeah. He'd like to change his name, his style of singing, his whole image. He just ain't worth it. <laughs> Well, now 
it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here.